Hi guys, Tony here with a new lesson. Thank you very much for joining me. Today I'm going to show you the one thing that really elevated my playing to the next level. Before I started connecting chords and scales together, I would say my playing was very average, very samey. Uh, because when someone asks you to play something, you can really just play a bunch of chords, right? But when you start learning how to connect chords and scales together, you can start to sound a lot more interesting. Uh, you can start to sound a lot more interesting because my favourite guitarists are people like John Mayer and John Frusciante. And if somebody asks them to play something, you can guarantee it's going to be something cool. Even if it's just something that's off the cuff. I realised that to start sounding more like them, what I had to do is to start visualising the scales that are around particular chords. So that you can fill it in with little fills, licks and tricks. And I'm going to show you a few of them today. I'm going to show you uh, three of my favourite things to do uh, with one particular chord and then I'm going to branch out in it. If this lesson does well, uh, you know, you can let me know in the comments if you enjoy this and I'll make sure that I follow up with other stuff just like this. But today we're going to focus on uh, the E shaped bar chord and things that are around that. All right, the scales that are around that and a couple of little tricks that I practice all the time. And I see people like John Mayer do all the time. I, I mention John Mayer a lot because he is a big influence on me. Actually, the first move is inspired by him. If you look at the uh, the A or the E-shaped bar chord, sorry. I'm playing an A chord here on the fifth fret. Right, and if you take something like Olivia, uh, he's playing that. doing this and what he's doing here and again this is why I always investigate what the guitar player's doing I don't just try and copy what they're playing you know what is he doing there where's he getting those notes from so we're using shape three of the pentatonic scale which really flows right off that E shape bar chord and of course, this is movable. Even if I just play the E chord here. Right, and right away, that's something really cool you can mess about with because it's really, really nice under the fingers. There's lots of different things you can do with that little box there. But I want to take our attention to another really great box which we can do many cool things with. Alright, so again, E chord or the E shaped bar chord. Do this. At the side. Now at the very bottom, we've got this little box. Alright, and there's many cool things that can be done right here. Uh, we've got shape two. Of the pentatonic scale here all right and one thing we can do is we can bend all right on the B string all right come back here to the major third and the sixth fret another cool thing we can do is we can hammer on to that major third from the minor third which gives us that real bluesy minor to major sound right Come back to the root there. And again, this is movable. That's what's great about this because once you know the shape and you know the scales around about it, you can then somebody ask you to play a G chord. Oh, that's for the, the simple man. Um, You know, I don't do that, by the way, but you could. Anyways, uh, right, so we have <laughs> the this little move, and when you get your finger here, you can then slide into the other part, right? And then the limits are limitless, my friend. The next thing I want to show you adds a real bit of flair 
to your playing, and that is this really cool Hendrix double stop. All right, and again, this can be moved about to whatever, whatever chord you're playing. So, um, at the bottom, again, we're using the bottom of shape two. And I'm hammering on from five to seven. I'm barring the bottom two strings, and I'm just getting the B string on the seventh fret. Seven on G, and I'm making this little shape here, my index finger on four, my middle on five, and the B, and I'm getting these two strings together. Hammering on six, back off again. And that's something, again, you can add in amongst the scales and licks that you're playing. So a cool way to practice all this and bring everything together is to play a little chord progression. We could just go between A and B minor and implement all those little licks that we just did. And we've got B minor here, we can use that scale um, or we can also use shape one of the minor pentatonic scale as well to mix it up a little bit. So. Something like that, and of course you can mix it up, do your own thing with it, and just go back and forth between those two chords and practice everything that we just did. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that's a fun one, and again, if you want to see more stuff like this uh, over more chords, we could look at the A shape, uh, we could look at the D shape, many other things that we can do with all the different chord shapes. So let me know in the comments, and I'll see you soon with a new lesson.